Thank you very much, Lucas. And, uh, you know, thank you everyone here to, for attending today. Um, as Lucas said, my name is Jerry Wiltsey, and I am a developer on the Conan team at JFrog. For today's talk, I'll be providing some high-level explanations about the fundamentals of Conan, but also going through some actual code and live exercises to reflect what working with Conan is like in practice. The link and QR code shown here on this slide will take you to all the resources for this talk. Uh, the slides will be posted there as well as the video recording. You can also rate this presentation and enter a raffle to win a Conan t-shirt. Uh, we will now post the link in the chat for those interested. Um, so uh, if you want to sign up, you don't have to take a screenshot of the QR code now. You can get the link in the chat. But we will also post it again at the end of the presentation. We also want to share with you the dates of another event where I'll be engaging Conan users with the rest of the Conan team. That is JFrog's annual DevOps conference called Swamp Up. We'll be holding the event online this year and running it twice, uh, once for the US and once for uh, European time zones. And the European time zones and dates are shown here at the bottom. Um, also, Ari has some additional information to share about Swamp Up. So Ari, if, uh, if you want to share that information in the chat or any additional links, um, please feel free to do so. Uh, you can get discounts on signups, uh, potentially, and uh, there will be links for that. So for the exercises today, I've created a reproducible environment, which contains all the files uh, for the examples, and I will use that to run the commands. The goal of this environment is that anyone can clone the repository and run the exercises on their own. The commands are all contained in the PDF files of this presentation, so that should be all you need to get started. Of note, the environment is based on Docker, so you will have to have Docker installed to run the exercises. But as long as you have Docker, uh, everything here should work on Windows, Mac, or Linux. If you try things out and you have any technical difficulties, please feel free to open a GitHub issue on the repository shown here. So before we start doing examples, I do want to provide a brief introduction um, to Conan for those who don't already know. Uh, Conan is a package manager for C and C++. It is open source and published with an MIT license. It is multi-platform, meaning it can run on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and anywhere else Python can run. Conan is stable, which means that uh, there are no breaking changes within major versions. That is to say that packages built with any Conan 1.x version will continue to work uh, with all future Conan 1.x versions. And if there's a breaking change, it won't be until Conan 2.x is released. Conan is also designed to support all the popular build systems in C and C++, as well as custom build systems, which is not uncommon in enterprise environments. Conan is a very active open source project. Uh, it has several full-time developers sponsored by JFrog, as well as a very active user community, uh, which submits dozens of pull requests every month. So our, we also have a Slack channel which has 1,200 members, and it is regularly one of the most active channels in the entire C++ community Slack. And finally, uh, the Conan team has created multiple interactive self-paced training courses to help people learn and remember and advance their knowledge of Conan. These courses are all available completely free and courtesy of JFrog on the online training platform known as the JFrog Academy. Here's the link on this slide if you'd like to see more information about those courses and sign up. You can use that. Uh, so the high-level design of Conan is fairly standard compared to other well-known package managers, such as NPM, PyPI, or even apt and yum on Linux. It features the concepts of a local repository, which will be used for local Conan operations, and a remote repository for sharing packages with easy-to-use upload and download capabilities between the two. So there's also a centralized and moderated public repository for open source packages, which is known as Conan Center. So Artifactory is a server application provided by JFrog, which can host such remote Conan repositories. And that's what we'll be using for the exercises today. Also of note, Conan Center is simply a Conan repository hosted on Artifactory, but it's on an instance uh, hosted in the cloud. So the hosting and moderation services for Conan Center and the packages there are all provided by JFrog. 
So while Conan is similar to other package managers in its high-level architecture, it's also very unique in its package model. The string shown here in the box, pkg0.1 at user slash channel, that's an example of what we call a recipe reference. And this is the most simple and logical identifier that there is for a package in Conan. One of the unique things about this recipe reference is that it can rep uh, represent any number of separate physical binaries with unique build configurations. That's depicted here with the purple boxes. So this package model in which a single identifier can represent any number of unique build configurations and uh, binaries is one of Conan's major innovations. So here's how Conan manages to do that. In simple terms, Conan assigns a unique ID for each unique configuration. This unique ID is called the package ID, and Conan uses that for various things throughout the build and packaging process. For example, the package ID is used as a fundamental part of the directory structure for storing Conan packages. So here on the right, we show three unique build configurations. Um, they're all for Apple Clang version 8.1, um, but one is for a shared library, one is for a static library build configuration, and one is for the debug build configuration. And all three of those get unique package IDs as represented by these boxes in the middle. And the unique binaries are stored in separate folders uh, as depicted in these purple boxes. But once again, this is all behind a single rep uh, recipe reference, for example, mylib 1.0.0. So the client and server also use the package ID as the matching mechanism when uploading and downloading binaries. For most operations you do in Conant, you must specify a build configuration, whether explicitly or implicitly using defaults. With this configuration, the Conan client will always calculate package IDs for each package in the dependency graph, and then it will use those for various interactions with the server. Also, once you've built or downloaded a specific binary for a package on your local machine, that binary can be used across any number of projects on the same machine with the same configuration. So with Conan, there's no need to rebuild the same binary multiple times with the exact same build configuration. Conan local uh, client and the Conan local cache effectively work as a binary cache for all of your C and C++ projects on your local machine. So here in this, uh, in this slide, we are depicting on the right the process of matching, where the local client on the bottom is trying to obtain a dependency of mylib uh, with a build configuration in the bottom right corner. And it queries the server to find, is there an, a binary already built? And we look at the package IDs as human beings, but the client and server, they use that package ID string. I'm sorry, we use the build configuration information as, as here, whereas the client and server simply exchange package IDs. So as we've said earlier, Conan uses the build configuration as the input for calculating those package IDs. And here are two examples of complete build configurations, which are generally referred to as profiles in Conan. Uh, users can store Conan profiles as text files in this format and then pass the file names to various Conan commands. This can be much more manageable than passing each of these values to Conan uh, as individual flags which you can certainly do, it's simply less uh, reproducible and less manageable. Um, so we will actually use both of these profiles that I'm showing here right now in our upcoming exercises today. As you can see on the left, we would be building a, a GCC uh, binary uh, with GCC version seven on Linux. And we will also be building uh, an MSVC binary with MSVC 16 on Windows. So one final note about these profiles is that they also allow you to do something else which is very powerful and unique to Conan. They allow you to specify build tools which you wish to be made available to your builds uh, within the build configuration. So this is done with the build requires section as highlighted here in yellow at the bottom. In this example, we've selected uh, specified that we wanna use CMake version 3.19.0 in these builds and it's worth noting that this implies that there has been a Conan package created in the past, which contains CMake 3.19.0. And 
uh, assuming that that's true, Conan will make the CMake executable from that package available within the build via the path environment variable. So you can therefore use build requires as an alternative to installing build tools such as CMake directly in your system or multiple systems that you may manage and use as part of your build or as part of a, a development team. So for many build tools in many environments, this strategy can offer a lot of advantages. Uh, for example, it can be fairly difficult to make sure that everyone is using the same version of a build tool on their machine or to keep various build servers for continuous integration all in sync with the same build tools installed on the Docker images or the virtual machine images. Uh, with this mechanism, you can distribute the tools and guarantee that they are consistent uh, simply by adding a couple lines in a build configuration. So there's much more to say about build requires, um, but we will use this one in our exercise today, and we'll talk a little bit about more about it at that time. However, it really is a topic that um, is really interesting within Conan, and it deserves its own sort of presentation. Finally, the last major innovation of Conan, which I want to mention, is the abstraction layer that it provides over build systems. So when developing um, applications in a team, it's a, typically a requirement that each developer should be able to build the entire application from source, including its dependencies, many of which are often open source. So many C and C++ libraries um, have open source dependencies, and unfortunately, many of those open source dependencies have unique and complex build systems. So this is a major burden for C and C++ developers who want to focus on the code and not necessarily on a bunch of arbitrary and different build systems from the open source community. So Conan aims to reduce this burden on the typical developer um, in that once an open source project has been packaged with Conan, Conan users no longer need to interact with the build system directly just to consume that open source dependency. Instead, users can just install such projects with the Conan install command, and Conan handles all the interactions with the build systems in the background. So, uh, whereas very often you have a bunch of developers in a team working with a single canonical build system for the internal projects, such as CMake, for example, and they're very often needing to use big open source dependencies like Folly, Boost, OpenSSL, or Absail, for example. And each of these has very different, unique build system characteristics. So when you bring Conan as, as an abstraction over top of those build systems, then users simply need to run Conan install for these libraries, and Conan will make that information available to their CMake projects internally, and they don't need to know anything about the open source third-party uh, build systems. So I think this graphic really reflects, again, one of Conan's major innovations, um, which is really important for enterprise development teams. OK, so now let's do some interactive exercises. For our first exercise, we are going to demonstrate um, a seemingly simple goal, which is to get an open source dependency from Conan Center and use it in a CMake project. Uh, it's also worth noting that the open source dependency we are choosing happens to be Boost Regex. And this is relevant because getting and using Boost libraries in particular has historically been a non-trivial endeavor. So here we're going to show how Conan makes that easier. The key command that we want to take away from this exercise is the conan install command. So here are all three of the relevant files for this exercise. First, we've got a single source file named regex.cpp, which includes boost regex.hpp. Next, we've got a file named conanfile.txt, and this file is the most simple and declarative way to use Conan to provide dependencies to your build system. In this case, we declare that we need boost version 1.74.0 and that we are using the CMake build system and that we want to use boost in CMake. That's done here in the generators section under CMake find package. Now, more specifically, we are saying we want to provide that dependency using CMake's find package feature. Um, there are multiple ways to consume dependencies using the CMake build system, and find package is one of them. 
and that's the one we are going to demonstrate here today. So then we have the CMake lists file on the right, which tells CMake how to build our sources. We can also see that we are indeed in that file using CMake's find package feature to locate boost and boot re boost regex specifically. You can see that here on the third line, find package boost regex required, components regex required. Now notice that this CMake list file does not contain anything specific or proprietary to Conan. This demonstrates that any existing CMake project using the find package feature can now use dependencies from Conan without needing any modifications to the CMake lists file. This is noteworthy because the Conan team has had to work very hard for several years to achieve this capability of complete transparency with CMake find package. It was not an easy thing and it went through many iterations and it is now uh, possible and available and it is really the ideal way to provide dependencies to CMake. So here are the commands I will run and again these commands are available in the slides so you can run them yourself afterwards if you want to run the exercises. The operative command here is Conan install on line three. This will download all the dependencies listed in the Conan file we just showed. Uh, Conan will also generate a number of files to be used in the upcoming build. One of those files is activate.sh, which is shown on the fourth line, and, uh, and we will use that in the um, uh, source activate command. So this is, uh, I'm sorry, so remember that we talked about build requires. The activate.sh script exposes the CMake executable from the Conan package to our current shell by prepending the bin directory from the package to our path environment variable, which we mentioned before. So this is how we will make use of CMake from our Conan package. It is via this activate.sh script. Uh, so again, we explain more about build requirements and Conan's virtual environment features in the courses in the JFrog Academy. So as a reminder, if you'd like to learn more about that, please do go check out the Academy and follow some of the courses there. So after we have used the activate.sh script, I'll just run my normal build system commands and my build system will automatically find and use the dependencies provided by Conan. So in this case, we run cmake dot dot to configure our project and then cmake dash dash build to build it. Um, it will create an executable called regex underscore exe. And when we run that uh, with the string shown here, we uh, get an output which has been transformed by the boost regex library. So here you see dot slash regex underscore exe and this executable is designed to parse email subjects. And uh, we have an example email subject here that says re Conan, which we um, know means regarding Conan. And so what we do is we parse that out and then we transform it and we print regarding um, Conan as the, as the output. It's a simple trivial program, it's just a toy, but the key is that it demonstrates how to use Boost in a very simple way and it proves that we are getting the dependencies from the Conan package manager. Okay, and before I do these actual commands, I'm going to skip ahead one slide to show that once we do all the commands, we're going to repeat them a second time with Windows. Um, as I said before, um, we're building once with Linux uh, and GCC 7, and then we're going to run the same exact build of the same exact project um, with MSVC 16. So um, let's start with Linux and then we'll See how that goes. So I will open a shell and I will zoom in. And we begin um, actually in instantiating our environment, which I was uh, intended to do earlier. There we go. And what that has done is it has used Docker, as I said before, to start an artifactory server for us to host a remote repository. And it has also started a Conan terminal demo container. This is a Docker container with Linux. And now in order to connect to the shell of that container, I will, oops, excuse me, I will use the Docker exec command. 
which again is reflected in the slides. There we go. So now, um, I will now jump back to the slide to show, okay, we're going to CD into the examples folder, make a directory called build Linux and run the Conan install command. All right, there's our folder. We are now in it and we will run Conan install with the profile. Uh, this will do some operations that will take a few moments. While that runs, I will use the time to say that uh, as with any live coding demo and exercises, um, there are the possibilities for technical difficulties. So if we run into any of those today, I apologize. And uh, we will follow up with um, links to pre-recorded videos uh, of these exercises um, so that you can see them work correctly. But we assume that they will work today. All right, so the, the Conan install operation has been completed. Now let's scroll through the logs for a moment to see what happened. Just want to highlight some key elements of the operation. Here's where we ran the command. The first thing Conan does is it prints out the configuration which was passed to Conan. So here is the complete configuration. And as you can see, it is what we showed on the slide previously. It is the Linux GCC 7. And then it proceeds to download and find dependencies, um, and it looks for the pre-compiled binaries for those dependencies. So here, the first one we mentioned was boost174. We listed that as our only dependency. And now we get to see the first interesting behavior where Conan downloads transitive dependencies automatically. So you may not have known, but boost actually requires Zlib and bzip2 as well, um, and some other things um, including lib backtrace and lib unwind and uh, xz utils actually actually I think these come from cmic if, if I'm not mistaken um, OpenSSL was also downloaded as a dependency of cmic interesting so Conan proceeded to then download the binaries. So, so in the first group of logs, Conan was downloading the recipes. Then it was able to find and download the binaries. So here, what I've highlighted is boost. And you can see this line, the Conan package.tgz. And this is saying that it downloaded 20 megs in the tarball. This is a good point to highlight that this 20 meg tarball contains only the static libraries of boost for GCC 7 um, for release with all the configuration specifications we mentioned. Um, it's pre-compiled and it's extremely efficient that way. Many other dependency strategies and solutions for something like Boost either include downloading all of the sources for Boost or all of the binaries for all of the Boost libraries. This only brings in um, the minimal amount, the static libraries that are needed for Boost. Um, and it's only 20 megs, as opposed to sometimes four and 500 megabytes you might get from other pre-compiled pre binary distributions. Okay, um, the next thing I wanna highlight here down at the end is once everything has been downloaded, Conan runs um, what, what are called the generator functions. As we said earlier, we use the CMake find package in our build system, and we specified that we wanna use the CMake find package generator for Conan. What that does is it creates find um, modules for CMake, which is how uh, find package works. So for each dependency in the dependency tree, we generate a .cmake file, which tells CMake how to find the headers, the static libraries, and so forth for those components. Additionally, we see that we are generating the activate.sh script that we showed earlier that we will be running um, and that's done using the virtual ENV generator. So now if we run ls, we can see those files are in our current working directory, which is build Linux. So now we can activate that virtual environment we said with activate.sh. But before we do that, 
I want to show something else. So the Docker container that I am using has CMake installed already in the system, as many Linux distributions do. And if I run CMake version, it's 3.9.1. And if I say which CMake, it'll tell us where it's finding CMake. It's in user bin CMake, my system directory, one of my system directories. So now we are going to contrast that after we've run the activate.sh script with the source command. Now, if I type cmake dash dash version, we find that it was the version that we specified in the Conan file.txt. Uh, I'm sorry, in the Conan profile. It is 3.19.0. And if we type which cmake, we can see now that cmake executable is coming from this dot Conan data cmake directory. It's in a deep subdirectory but it's in the bin directory. So this is how we can see that we are using the CMake executable from a Conan package and not the CMake executable from the system. So we can now run our command. And remember, this is just CMake. This is just us running our build system now with having generated some CMake files from Conan. So we've just executed CMake the way we normally would. Um, we specified a build type, and we've told it to look in the current directory for CMake modules. And thus, um, now when we run CMake dash dash build, we will get an executable. OK, in this log, we can see this line linking CXX executable regex underscore exe. That is a success. So now we will jump back to the slide just so that everyone remembers where we were. We are now here. Oops, excuse me. We are now here, and we are about to pass the subject line string so that it can be parsed and transformed by boost regex. Copy paste problem. There we are. Okay, so we gave it this string and it was transformed to this string. That was our goal, that was a success, and we proved that we can get our dependencies from Conan. And by the way, if we look at the log, we can see where uh, CMake is telling us about where it found all of its boost dependencies. It found them all once again in the Conan cache under dot Conan slash data slash boost. Proving that it found um, boost and the right version, where we wanted it to come from, and so forth. So this was our success. So now as a matter of just cleanup, we are going to deactivate that environment that we made, and that will take us back to our system CMake, which is the 3.9.1. So the, the virtual environments are temporary uh, we can load them into our shell and unload them as we want. So we can have environments with CMake 3.19 and environments with CMake 2.8 if we need. Um, Conan makes that very easy and very flexible with the virtual environments feature. Now I will jump back to our original directory. Now we will switch over to Windows. And before we do that, I want to demonstrate on the slide, once again, um, the difference. So here was the Linux commands. And now this is the Windows slide. And the commands are all almost identical all the way through. In spirit, they are the same. The only difference here is some slight differences in syntax for doing things on Windows compared to Linux. Uh, and those differences are highlighted in green. So the directory name we'll use instead of build Linux is build Windows, excuse me. We'll use a different profile that we said earlier. Um, instead of using source activate.sh, we run call activate.bat. Very easy to see the difference. Um, there's a difference in the syntax for saying current directory on Windows as opposed to Linux. Um, and when you use the Visual Studio generator on Windows for CMake, 
You have to pass an additional argument, which is the dash dash config release. Um, and then when you invoke an executable built with the Visual Studio generator, you have to specify the release subfolder and put the exe extension. But by and large, the commands, the flow, the, the operations are all the same as the Linux example. So I will now run through those. I will not uh, take the time to analyze the logs or explain in the same way. Um, we will simply want to see that um, it works as we expect. So we'll zoom in again, and now I will go on Windows, and now you can see I'm in my build Windows directory, and I will run the Conan install, but now specifying that window uh, MSVC profile. Now this one went substantially faster. I will call out a few differences. The build configuration has the differences we expect. The compiler's Visual Studio version 16, but we said once again, CMake is still a build requirement. Um, another difference is the requirements, the dependencies. If you remember on Linux, there were four or five more dependencies for Boost in the dependency graph. And here on Windows, there's only a few. That reflects Conan's management of conditional dependencies based on platform and compiler and things like this. So on Linux, Boost depends on one set of dependencies, and on Windows, it's another. That's not a feature of, of Conan, per se. That's a way that the open source C and C++ library ecosystem works, is that dependencies are per platform, and Conan models it correctly. Um, another thing I want to point out here is that we see here that each of these dependencies has this word cache at the end. And what that uh, reflects is that these uh, binaries and these dependencies already existed on my Windows machine. Um, and it was able to reuse the existing binaries because they were in my cache. It did not have to re-download them. It did not have to rebuild them from source. And I see some good questions in the chat. Um, and uh, again, the VIPs Yulian or others will uh, will be able to help answer those in the meantime. But um, finally, I'll jump down to the end. Here we see the CMake find package generator. Just like on Linux, it created the find uh, modules for all the dependencies. And we have, again, the virtual ENV generator providing our scripts, our, our environment scripts. Again, they're bat files. Um, we also have .sh files in case you're using Windows subsystem for Linux. And we also have PS1 in case you use PowerShell instead of bat. But these are all functionally equivalent, by the way. So now, let us activate our environment. Um, and now if I run cmake dash dash version, we can prove that it's cmake 3.19. And if I say where on Windows, we can see that it was it's coming from uh, this deep directory under .conan data cmake 319, very similar to the Linux example. Yes, dr Audrey. Okay. So now that we have activated, we will run our CMake configuration. Excuse me, our CMake configuration step. Now, uh, once again, we should see CMake find all the dependencies in the Conan cache. Um, you see the dot Conan directory, and it's finding libboostcontext.lib inside the Conan cache. So that's uh, what we expected to see. That's what we wanted to see. Excuse me. And now we will run CMake uh, with the dash dash config release, which is what you need for Visual Studio. And we see in the log this line here which indicates at the end that it produced this regex underscore exe program. And if we jump down and run that once again, we will now run it, pass it the string, and we get regarding Conan. Remember that is our success. So we have succeeded. And we will now call the deactivate scripts to sort of undo the changes we made to our path environment variable. And now if I run cmake dash dash version, 
um, it is 3.17.0, which is the version that I have installed on my Windows system. So the purpose of running this once on Linux and then running it once on Windows had, was a fewfold. We wanted to show the difference, but we also wanted to show the, similar, the similarities that the workflow that Conan provides is this abstraction of build that is consistent across all different platforms with different build systems um, and different dependencies. Uh, but in general, your developer experience starts to become a lot less complicated and a lot more predictable and a lot more scriptable and automatable. So uh, that's overall a good thing, especially in professional development environments. So let's jump back to our slides, which we haven't seen for a minute. Ah, there's one more thing on the bottom of this slide that I need to mention. As mentioned in the comments here in Teal, what we did used pre-compiled binaries from Conan's center, central repository. However, um, it's important to note that we don't necessarily have to use pre-compiled binaries with Conan. That's not a requirement. It's uh, possible and even trivial to tell Conan, instead of using the binaries that it found in cache or remote repository, to build those dependencies from source. And you can see here in the last line, that I'm passing the dash dash build all flag, or I can pass a uh, build with a, a list of, um, of package names. And Conan will build all or some of the dependencies individually from source on the fly and populate my cache with the binaries that it built as it goes through the dependency graph. This is an incredible feature of Conan, and we'll talk a little bit more about how valuable that is um, here. So um, we're going to summarize uh, the takeaways from this exercise. Conan install is the operative command to get dependencies from Conan and use them in the build system for your project. We use CMake, but it's the same for MS build, make, auto tools, pre-make. Most build systems can be supported in the same way uh, that CMake is supported. Um, so Conan makes the process relatively simple to get these dependencies and inject them into our project, even with historically non-trivial dependencies like Boost. So uh, again, Conan can provide these dependencies to any build system. They don't all use fine package, so Conan generates uh, build system files that are specific to each build system. So that's the generators feature, and there are many built-in generators that you can find in the documentation. Um, so finally, Conan Center provides many packages uh, with popular C and C++ projects, which include pre-compiled binaries for many different platforms and configurations. We picked a Linux and a Windows configuration, and we had pre-compiled binaries for Boost for both of them. In general, we provide over 100 pre-compiled binary configurations for each library. So Windows, Linux, Mac, and many different um, compilers and versions across those operating systems. However, Again, super important, Conan provides the dash dash build flag, which always lets users choose to build some or all of the dependencies from source on the fly. This is just extremely important in many situations because in many companies and teams, um, using pre-compiled binaries is simply not an option for a wide variety of reasons, be they legal reasons, policy or security reasons, or simply configuration reasons. If you need non-default configurations like optimization levels, you have to build from source. Conan makes that process trivial. OK. So moving on to the next exercise. Now we want to talk about Conan recipes. Um, and then we're going to do an exercise where we uh, take a Conan recipe that we've written and we create a package from it. Uh, but first, we want to explain what the recipe is and show some other examples before we jump into that exercise. So in simple terms, a Conan recipe is a Python class, which Conan will read and execute the methods in order to create the Conan package. Um, we will show three examples here. Uh, it's going to be a fairly empty, empty recipe, just kind of the skeleton. Then we'll show one with CMake, and then we'll show one um, for a generic um, or custom build system. Actually, I think that's out of order. I think we're going to show the, the CMake version last. So, um, 
So here's an example of a recipe, but it's really just the shell. As you can see, this is a Python class, but all of the methods have been commented out, the method bodies, that is. We just want to show the method names and talk a little bit about the process of those methods. So um, it starts out with an export sources method where we can define the sources which Conan will need to capture in the current directory, the work, the user space directory, in order to build the project. Um, it will copy those to a build directory ultimately, and it will build those, but we specify what sources need to go into the build in the exports sources method. Next, in the requirements method, we declare our project's dependencies. Um, we'll show an example of that on the next slide, but it's, it's very similar to what we saw previously with Boost. Next, in the generate method, we, that's where we produce the files for the build system which contains all the variables we will need. So for example, the find package generator we showed earlier, that will actually be executed in the context of this generate method. Next, the build system will run, and in the build system, we'll invoke your build system to actually build sources into binaries. Um, after the binaries are built, we go to the package method, and in the package method, we capture the binaries which we built, um, and any other necessary files, such as headers or any other generated content we, that would need to be used by consumers, we capture that inside the package method. And those files get copied to an internal directory within Conan in the cache called the package directory. And then finally, the package info method at the end is run when the package is used. And in here, we declare what the contents of the package directory are. And so this will be executed by the consumer recipes um, to gather the names of the libraries that this package contains, the paths to the directories where those libraries are stored on disk, and the paths to header directories where all the headers are stored. And all of the variables that are produced in the package info method and sort of described there uh, ultimately get put into the generated files from the generators, like the find boost.cmake. So those variables come from the package info method. So again, Conan will execute each of these methods in order, in order to create uh, a package. So here's an example of a Conan recipe with those methods actually filled in. In the export sources uh, method, we'll use a helper method um, called self.copy. Um, and we pass it an asterisk, and this says we need to recursively copy all the files in the current directory to the build directory for this recipe. Um, and that's how we say these are the inputs to the build. In the requirements, we say that we need boost version 1.74.0. Um, in the generate method, we call a function, which will take information about the dependencies uh, and the build configuration, which we've passed to Conan, and, uh, and produces the file that our build system can read. Um, as we said earlier, we can run one of the, uh, the CMake find package generator, for example. Uh, that's a thing we can do. Or we can write custom functions, which will take the information about Boost, about its headers and its libs and its lib directories, and it will produce a text file for our custom build system. Um, right. So uh, of note, custom build systems are not uncommon in enterprise environments. Uh, but you won't really see this very often in open source recipes. So Boost and Folly and things like that, they have build systems um, where we have built-in generators for, but you may need to do this if, you've, if your company's written its own build system and maintains its own build system. So next in the build system, uh, the build method, we will call the build system, which will read whatever files we generated from the generate method. Um, in this build method, we can use the self.run method again, which is just a convenience method for invoking tools, external tools at the shell. So self.run is just subprocess with a wrapper. And in this example, we are invoking um, a pretend build system called custom build system. But you could just as easily imagine that saying self.run cmake, self.run b2, or self.run make, ms build. This is where you would do that. Um, so then after the package is built, we said we want to package the artifacts. Um, and so this example shows a package method which uh, has the goal of capturing all the necessary artifacts 
for all three of the major development platforms that developers typically use, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So this package method example here is very sort of broad. Um, you can see what it's doing. It's cop capturing all the header files that end in .h, and it's putting them in a directory called include. It's capturing all DLL files and putting them in a bin directory. So on Windows, this might capture some shared libraries if we were building shared libraries. Um, copying star.lib to a lib directory. Dilibs um, is the Mac OS shared library uh, extension, so that goes to a lib directory. .so and .a all go into a lib directory. So again, um, no matter whether this package method is run on a Windows build, a Linux build, or a Mac build, it will capture the necessary headers and the necessary artifacts and put them in a package directory that can be used by consumers later. Um, now notice that these calls to self.copy specify some other parameters such as source, dest, and keep path. Um, where it's, we say false down here. So these parameters give you the necessary flexibility to specify the target files that you want to capture, regardless of the file structure that the build system creates. Um, so you can choose, and, and then the destination lets you choose how to organize the binaries that you've captured into whatever folder structure you want inside your package folder. Um, so you, we give the author to have the flexibility uh, the ability to, to be flexible in the layout that it's capturing from and the layout that it's copying the binaries to. The way that we deal with that for consumers then is in the package info method, we just need to describe what the destination layout was that we put our files into. So um, first here, we're declaring that we put all the headers into a directory named include. So up here, we copy star.h to a directory called include. And down here we say, uh, look for the subdirectory of include. That's where all my headers are. Uh, next, we declare that we've put all the binaries, in this case, Windows DLLs, in a subdirectory called bin. Uh, we declare that we've put all the library files that you need for linking inside of a directory named lib. That's shown here with libdirs equals lib. And finally, we declare that the list of library files which um, which should exist in that lib directory and which need to be linked with, um, there's only one and it's named mylib. So this is how we can describe what this package will produce for its consumers and generators will read these variables from this package and be able to find the list of libs to link with, find the directories that they live in and find all the headers that go with them and produce valid CMake files, valid MS build files and so forth. Um, <clears throat> it can be somewhat overwhelming, so if you're if you're having trouble following 100%, don't worry. Uh, again, the training courses on the JFrog Academy are great resources. They go a little more slowly, and they spend a little more time explaining some of the concepts. So here we just want to show one other example, um, uh, one that's a little bit different. So in this example, we're going to demonstrate a recipe uh, that is a lot more elegant and a lot more clean because it uses a common build system, uh, in this case CMake, but it would look similar if it was MS Build or Auto Tools. When Conan has built in um, support for a particular build system, um, the recipes can make use of helper functions, which we'll demonstrate now. So the first two methods are exactly the same. Export sources and requirements, those haven't changed. There's nothing CMake specific about that. However, in the generate method, Whereas before we called some custom function that is going to generate some text files with unspecified file format. Here we're using two built-in helper classes. One's called CMake Toolchain and one's called CMake Depths. And these generate the findBoost.CMake as well as a, a Conan Toolchain.CMake file, which we didn't talk about. But these are built-in generators for Conan, and it makes it a lot cleaner to look at the recipe. Um, and uh, behind the scenes, by the way, these generators are um, are just invoking the self.run method that we saw in the previous example, and they're calling CMake. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the, the helper down below here is calling CMake, which I'll get to in a moment. So these are custom Python classes that produce text files, .cmake files. Uh, and then the next step after the generate method runs is the build method. 
In the build method, we use the CMake helper. We call CMake.configure method and CMake.build method. Um, these methods, uh, as I said earlier, are simply Python ways to run the CMake command line executable. And what's nice about them is they take care of the command line formatting. So spaces and quotes and slashes are all handled correctly when you use the build helpers. Um, and it just makes the recipe look a lot cleaner. But you could effectively do and accomplish all the same things by using self.run. Just pointing out that the, the helper methods make it a lot easier to get it right and a lot cleaner. Similarly, in the package method, instead of manually specifying all of the possible files that we want to capture, this example makes use of the CMake install function, the CMake install command. Um, because in CMake projects, when an install target is defined in CMake, that already declares the destination layout of the produced artifacts that you need to use a library or to use an application that's built with CMake. So here, instead of redundantly specifying to capture all the DLL files and the SO files and the A files and the headers, we can just run the CMake install function and Conan will invoke CMake passing all the correct flags and copy all of the artifacts that we build into our package folder. It's much cleaner and it avoids duplicate uh, specification. OK, finally, though, uh, once again, in the package info method, we're declaring to the consumers the same information. The headers are all in the include directory, binaries are all in a bin directory, and libs are all in a lib directory, and the ultimate library that we're producing is mylib. So uh, when you have a, a, build, a build tool um, that Conan supports, the recipe is cleaner and it's easier to get correct. OK, so now for our exercise, we're going to take the same project we used in the previous example, and we're now going to package it. Instead of using conanfile.txt, we're going to use a complete recipe of conanfile.py. We're going to use the full Conan Python recipe. And we're going to use the Conan create command to build our package from this recipe instead of the Conan install command. OK. So as a reminder, our source file was named regex.cpp on the left and depends on boost regex, which is shown in the first line. Also, it uses the CMake build system, which again is a, which has a very standard configuration as shown on the right. It's literally exactly the same as the previous um, exercise. But here's the difference. Instead of the Conan file.txt in the middle, which we showed earlier, we're going to use Conan file.py as shown here. Um, it's very similar to the generic CMake recipe we looked at earlier. You can see CMake is used in the build and package method. Um, and the only difference really is the uh, export sourced method is a little bit different. And instead of using a generate method, we're, we're using a shortcut, which is this generator's attribute. But by and large, um, it's the same. So let's run this exercise. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we use the Conan create command, which will use our recipe to get our sources, build our project, and capture the artifacts. And that creates a package. And actually, uh, it's interesting, the, all we need to execute in order to do that are these first two commands here. These first two commands do everything needed to build the package. The rest of the commands in this exercise are simply demonstrations to show that once we've packaged an executable, like um, the regex executable, this shows how to run and test that executable from our local directory, again, using virtual environments. So, um, so once, once we've created the package, we will actually create a directory called run Linux. And this folder is just to run the program. That's it. Um, so in order to run the program that we built, we use the Conan install command, and we give it the package reference, the, the recipe reference we mentioned earlier, regex 0.1.0 at demo demo. And we invoke the virtual run environment, which is similar but slightly different than the virtual environment we used for CMake previously. We pass it the Linux GCC7 profile, and that will produce another activate script called activate run.sh. We invoke it the same way we did with the activate.sh script previously for CMake. 
Um, and that, again, puts our regex exe on the path of our current shell so that when we run regex exe, we can access our executable. Uh, we're going to pass the same string, get the same result, and then we're going to deactivate. After we do that exercise, we're going to do it a second time on Windows. Highlighted in green, once again, it's the same commands, it's just slightly different syntax um, in the same places. Let's do the Linux example first. Let's go back to our shell. Go back to our Linux shell. Clear. And let's create our package. We go to the create package folder and we run the create command, Conan create from the current directory. Now this goes very fast. I will not go through the whole log, but I will highlight a few things. First, Conan tells us that it packaged a single file called regex.exe. At a high level, that tells us we were successful. We see the same CMake process for resolving dependencies taking place up here in the logs. And if I scroll way, way up, sorry. Again, we see that um, this time, all of the dependencies were found in the cache of our build container. So this is allows us to reuse the boost binaries that we used for the previous example and all the dependencies. We're reusing them again because we're using the same build configuration. So you saw how fast that was. We didn't have to recompile anything and we didn't have to wait. So now uh, that's it. We've created our package and it even tells us where the package was finally put to rest which is in this long subdirectory inside .conan slash data, regex, blah, blah, blah. And so we want to run that. Now what we could do is pass this whole path, but we're going to use a virtual environment instead because it's cleaner and it's shorter and it's better. So we're going to make a directory to test this. Then we are going to run Conan install in that directory, which will produce us our virtual environment script which will put the path to that executable on our path. So if I type which regex exe, we can see that it has found regex in that directory. And if I type um, print env and I grep for the path, well, that was a bad example. That's a bit messy. Uh, we can see it down here at the bottom. I think, I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, so um, it's still there. So now that the regex exe is on our path, we will pass it the string and we get our successful output. Hopefully that makes sense. We will now deactivate our shell so that we, um, are back to a default shell. And we will now move over to the Windows example. Jump to the right, which is my Windows shell. And I will now clear the screen. And we will go to Examples, Create Package. We will run Conan Create. Again, the syntax on this command is identical except for the profile name. It will use the same sources directory. It will capture the same sources. It will use different dependencies, but it will build the same program on a different platform. And here, once again, we've packaged one executable file, regex underscore exe dot exe. And so I will now make a directory to test that executable. There we go. Conan install regex, and I pass minus g, to, which is going to help, which is what's going to produce the shell script, the bat script, which I'm going to use. There we go. Now, if I type which regex underscore 
exe.exe, sorry, where on Windows, it's where. It tells us that it found it in this deep subdirectory inside of bin. So that was expected. So let's run it and make sure we get the transformed subject. There it is. So that was a successful example on Windows. We will deactivate our shell. We will then move on to the next exercise. Again, we'll just briefly point out that the only differences on Windows were that we use call instead of source, the script is a .bat instead of a .sh, and our directory was, was Windows, um, and also our extension had a .exe at the end. But again, the workflows are the same in different platforms, it's just slightly different syntax. So here are the key takeaways from this exercise. Um, the Conan recipe is conanfile.py. It's the instructions for creating a Conan package, and it's, a, it's just a Python class with standard methods. Um, requirements defines dependencies, exports sources defines the sources, build tells Conan how to build the artifacts, and then package captures those artifacts. Package info is interesting because it declares what was captured and what the folder structure was of those packaged captured artifacts. And Conan calls these methods and some others in order to create the package. All right, our final exercise, and I, I see we're, we're getting close on time, so I will hurry. Our final exercise is now to upload the package we just created to a remote repository. Uh, so first, we will review the list of remote repositories available in our environments. Then we'll add a new repository uh, with the Conan remote add command. And um, the repository we'll add will be one that was created during the startup of the demo environment. Um, that repository was created and is now hosted in another local Docker container running an instance of JFrog's Artifactory. Now, of note, it'll be the CE version of Artifactory, that's the community edition, which is designated for CNC++. Um, and again, it was a great fit for this demo because it's free and it's designed to be used specifically for hosting Conan repositories uh, only. So on that server, we've created a Conan repository and it's called Conan-Local, um, which we will now add and upload our regex package to it. So let's do that. The, the operative command here will be Conan upload. All right, we'll start by listing um, the existing remote repositories. And of note, we should find Conan Center as the default. Next, we will add a new remote repository with the name of Artifactory and the URL from the demo environment. So this is the URL. Uh, nice thing about Docker now is, is we get a consistent URL. This should be the same URL in, in your environment if you choose to run it locally with the same port. Now, since this is a private remote uh, repository and we want to upload packages to it, we need to provide credentials. Um, Conan Center is a public remote and you can download packages without credentials, but if you want to upload, you need credentials. Um, so we'll add credentials with the Conan user command as shown here. Um, we'll use the default credentials from Artifactory CE for that, uh, just to keep it simple. So next, we should be able to upload our hello package to that repository, um, and then we can use the Conan search command here at the end um, to search our remote and see that our regex package has been uploaded. And we're going to study the results a little bit to understand what the Conan search is telling us. Um, OK, let's do that exercise now. Let me bring a shell back up. Let's start with. Windows, uh, sorry, Linux. We'll start with Conan Remote List. As I said earlier, we expect to see Conan Center as the only remote, and we do. 
Um, Conan Center comes installed by default, and uh, you can find that there. Now we will add Artifactory. This is a remote named Artifactory, and it points to the URL of the demo environment. OK, that worked. As we said earlier, we need to provide some credentials so that we can upload Now we can upload. So we're going to upload the package named regex010 at demo slash demo. Um, and we're going to upload it specifically to the remote named artifactory. Um, all in force, we won't talk about today. They're just helpful for the demo. They're not always required. There we go. And if we look here, we actually see two uploads. And I briefly want to explain what that is. Uh, the first one is called the Conan Sources tarball, and that's two files, um, and it show, shows what all the files are. That's just the Conan file and all of the sources in case it needs to rebuild. Then the next step is actually the Conan package tarball, and that is um, the actual binary you know, executable that we built. And there are these other little files as well, the Conan manifest and the Conan info, but by and large, there's two components. There's uploading the, the recipe and the, and the contents of the recipe, and then there's uploading the binary. And if we had four binaries for four different configurations, we would see a total of five uploads. OK, so that's Linux. Now, on our Windows machine, we're going to upload uh, we're going to do the same steps, and we're going to upload the same package. If you remember, we created the same recipe and created the same package. When I remote list, I will remote add artifactory. I will give it the credentials. And I will upload regex. And now, once again, we upload the regex recipe component, and then we upload the package, the binary. So in theory, the two recipes that we just uploaded and the sources and the CMake list that we captured were the same on the Windows machine and on the Linux machine. So those were consistent, and they've been uploaded, and so it's actually redundant. However, each of the two environments had different binaries for regex. And so now we've uploaded two different binaries to different configurations for the same package to the repository. And now we should see um, what we talked about in the very beginning, which is a single recipe, a single logical package, but with multiple binary configurations inside of it. So let's see if that's what the search shows us. So we're searching for this package, and we're searching the Artifactory remote. And uh, we, we have it. We have it. So here we see existing packages for regex 010 at demo demo. And we see two package IDs. And remember at the beginning, um, package IDs represent unique build configurations. The first package ID is a 64-bit release, Visual Studio version 16. And by the way, here were the dependencies when we built that. The second package ID is a 64-bit release GCC version 7 binary on Linux. And here were the dependencies from that. So indeed, Conan Search uh, shows us that model that we talked about in that very beginning. One recipe reference. One recipe reference and two binary packages. So now I will jump one time to show one other thing. We're going to go and look at the Artifactory server's web interface just to show how that package looks in a file tree, in a browser, in a, in a nice GUI type interface. It's, it just helps tie the model and the abstraction together. So if we go to Artifactory and we go to Artifacts, and we look at Conan Local, which was our repository. 
we have regex 010 here, and we have demo, and we have our sort of our revision. And under the package directory, we see our two binaries listed independently. So you can see regex 010 is one logical package with multiple binary configurations um, here. So um, if I click on this one, we can actually see, sorry, it's a little tough to see this one. There it is. There's a Conan package info uh, tab here when you click on the folder, and it shows you this was the Windows x86 release binary. And if I go down here, we see it was the Linux, uh, sorry, the x64 release binary for GCC. So this shows the graphical representation of what we talked about earlier. So cool, we reviewed the results. We showed the GUI. And we can now quickly recap what we did. We, we used the Conan upload command, which was a very straightforward syntax for uploading packages to a remote repository. Um, and we showed some easy ways to list and add remotes and, and so forth. Uh, we learned that Conan has a local repository. We often refer to that as the local cache. And packages shared there, remember, are used by all projects um, on the local machine. And so you don't have to rebuild um, the same boost dependency many times for many consumers. Uh, so we explained that this strategy of local and remote repositories with simple commands for uploading and downloading between the two is similar to other package managers, which provides a practical and familiar experience to developers. Um, finally, we demonstrated how Artifactory CE provides free local hosting for Conan repositories and how fast and easy it was to set up an instance and upload packages to it. So that's all the exercises I have for today, which is a shame because there's a lot more to show. Uh, but with that said, here are the best places for you to go to learn more about Conan. So on the homepage of Conan.io, you can find links uh, to each of the following resources. Um, each is valuable in its own way, depending on your environment and your interests and your knowledge level. Uh, but we hope that you find some of them useful. And also, if you just want to chat with me or the Conan team or other Conan users, you can find us all on Slack in the CPP Lang uh, community channel. Uh, there's a Conan channel, hashtag Conan. Um, and there's some really great questions and answers going on in the chat. Um, I, I hope everyone is getting good stuff. And uh, one additional resources, uh, resource that we are excited to share with everyone here is this one page graphical cheat sheet for Conan commands and concepts. This was just released this week, um, and it can be very handy to print this out and keep it on your desk or wall or cubicle when you're trying to learn and remember some of Conan's basic operations and commands. If you find this sort of cheat sheet helpful as a developer, please give us some sort of uh, thumbs up reaction in the chat. Um, and we'll also post the Twitter announcement in the chat so that you can give that a like as well if you use Twitter. Um, so if Julian or Diego can post the tweet about the cheat sheet in the chat, um, we would just love to hear the community feedback. So we're really interested in understanding how well liked this kind of material is for the community because we're considering doing another version with more advanced commands and operations later if it's really popular. And also, if people seem to use it, we'll be you know, more aggressive to update it when Conan 2.0 is released, as many of these commands will change. So um, yeah, hopefully people find the cheat sheet um, useful. And uh, please do tweet that, um, retweet the uh, cheat sheet if you can. So in closing, I really want to thank um, Andres and Lucas and um, everyone here for allowing me to come present to you all today. I hope the session was enjoyable and informative. And if so, please mention us on social media if you if you can. Um, in any case, at this point, um, I think it's a good time to take questions and comments or any feedback at all, really. We're, we're definitely getting some in chat. And Andres or Lucas, if you're still present, um, if there's anything else uh, or you want to sort of go through any questions, now would be a good time. And here's the link, by the way, for the t-shirt raffle if you want to try to enter that again. Um, 
So let's see. So first of all, uh, thank you for this wonderful talk. It was very informative. Mm -hmm. So now is your chance to ask questions directly. Um, I'm seeing a question. One second, I'll read it out. Um, is it also possible to see the toolchain in the web? Uh, GUI to artifactory of the packages prefer Win64 CL16 instead of a long string. That's not very telling, FF83, something like this. As package ID reason, I would be better to see the toolchain as better overview. Great question. Uh, thank you, Diego, for posting the cheat sheet. Great question. Sadly, the answer is no. In the artifactory GUI, um, it is constrained to sort of the file tree browser, um, which handles like a lot of complexity. And there's no currently no alias or folder, like a common name or anything like that strategy. So if you need to see things in general, people don't often browse in, in real world use cases. They don't often browse looking for binaries. They more, more often do searches. So you're typically doing searches at the command line or searches through the GUI. And in there, it, it, you can search by those kinds of keywords and, and sort of, yeah, that's a good one. Good question. Yeah, so we showed the tab that you can look at, but it's not browsable. It's not a browsable uh, field. Let's see, what other questions did we have? Mm, I'm not seeing any questions right now anymore. Let's wait a second to see if someone's still typing. Um, looking at the chat, there uh, seems to have been a very active and uh, communication so far and discussion where a lot of questions were asked and answered. Um, also, there is the after talk chat. So if you want to ask uh, Jerry yourself, feel free to hop uh, in in a second. And um, let's see, maybe there will be another question, but it doesn't look like it right now. No, I think I think we got to, they got to most of the questions. Thanks to the wonderful team, um, Conan mm -hmm. team for jumping in and handling all of those. And yeah, well, let's, uh, I know we're going to a Zoom channel a Zoom um, meeting to have a, a follow-up conversation. So I'll be there to answer more questions. 